Those were the times when the Great War, 1914-1918, was carried out from within a trench, surrounded by barbed wire. The battlefront, used to stay for weeks and months, in the same position, with little change. But there was no proper vehicle to break them, and move through them. In 1915, France had just developed a new branch of its artillery, called the Assault Artillery, and was looking for a suitable vehicle for it. As a result, the French company Schneider at Sea, was given permission to search for a solution. One of its engineers, who had been working in Spain on the design of armored vehicles, proposed to manufacture an armed armor tractor. Its concept, was based on the Baby Holt Agricultural Tractor, from the American company Holt Manufacturing Company, California, USA. In 1915, the char d'assault, literally assault car, Schneider CA was developed. For France, the Schneider CA, was considered its first model of combat car, or tank. Spain decided, in 1921, to create what would be our first mobile, or self-propelled artillery battery, using current terminology. In Spain, we were much clearer than in France, that this vehicle had no combat tank characteristics. Six upgraded Schneider CA-1, were purchased from France under the name, M16 Heavy Artillery Tank. They arrived with 6,075mm projectiles, and spare parts. Furthermore, to complete the mobile fleet of said battery, the following were acquired. 6 LATIL tractors, each with its trailer. 3 Krupp trucks, for ammunition and transport of crews. 1 Hispano Sunniza tank truck, 1 Hotmove a light car, and 2 Harley Davidson motorcycles. After three months of training, at the Central Artillery Shooting School of Madrid, the battery moved, in early March 1922, to Dardrias, in Melilla. The Schneider Model CA-1, was a basic CA vehicle, but improved in several aspects, which we will describe. As we can see, its design, had a ship's bow, to break fences and pass over trenches. The armor had been improved, with a second 5mm plate, 
up to 19 millimeters on the front and part of the sides of the vehicle. Maintaining, in the rest of the vehicle, a 7 mm armor. Let's start, with the entry and exit doors of the vehicle. In the back, it had a double main access door. And on the left side, there was another, smaller, secondary access door. At the top of the vehicle, the driver had a small hatch for ventilation, which was also good for standing driving. And at the top and rear, there were two other larger hatches that could be used as an exhaust if necessary. Let's see, what was hidden, inside the Spanish heavy artillery cart. Returning to the interior, the internal height, did not reach one meter, so the crew, was sitting or semi-lying down. As we can see, almost in the center, there was a gap that allowed, machine gunners, to travel or shoot almost on their feet. The vehicle, weighed 13,500 kilograms, and was fitted with a 9,700 cubic centimeters, four-cylinder, water-cooled engine with an output of 60 horsepower, at 1,000 RPMs. The engine was in the same cabin as the crew, with added noise and possible gases produced inside. The speed, at which he could advance, was only 8 kilometers an hour. Another change, in the CA-1 model, was to bring the fuel tanks from the front to the rear of the vehicle. Now, they had a total capacity of 220 liters of gasoline, which allowed an autonomy of up to 80 kilometers. He was able, to overcome a 40 centimeters high obstacle, and cross a 1.70 meters long trench. For the clearance of trenches, the vehicle could lean on the clearance tails, on the back. As the main armament, it had a Blockhaus Schneider 75.5mm, Mod 1916 gun, on the right front. With the 96 shells in his cabin, he could reach up to 2,100 meters, although the useful range was 600 meters. Each projectile weighed 5.31 kilograms. It had a horizontal sector of fire, of 20 degrees, of return by the gunner. And a vertical sector of fire, from 20 degrees to plus 20 degrees, that was moved with a lifting wheel by the gunner. was done by fixed sight, or by crosshair, like a rifle. As a secondary armament, it had on each side of the vehicle, an 8mm Hotchkiss M1914 machine gun. It was, the regulatory machine gun model in Spain, and each had 2,000 shots. As we said before, the space for the crew, was really scarce and overwhelming during combat. Its crew, consisted of a total of six people, with the following functions. One gunner officer and tank chief. One first sergeant driver. One gunner, supplying the gun. Two machine gunners. One machine gunner and machine gun supplier.
Finally, one more detail, both front and rear, the vehicle had two lamps for night driving. Our first self-propelled battery entered combat on March 15, two weeks after its arrival in Melilla. And another milestone for the history of the Spanish Armed Forces occurred on March. The first inter-weapons armored operation of the Spanish Army occurred in the Ambarnchigans area. The Schneider CA-1 artillery fought alongside the Renault FT infantry tanks and some armor trucks of the engineer. For the battles of May and June, 1923, in the Tafersuit area against the Rife Escabel, the battery obtained its first collective medulla for military merit. In these actions, the first two Schneider CA-1 heavy artillery tanks were lost. The next milestone of this battery occurred during the first gunner landing in al Husaynas on September 8, 1925. A force of 13,000 men was landed. 40 warships and 30 other logistical vessels intervened, in addition to 26 barges and 8 aircraft squadrons. Years later, General Dwight Eisenhower studied it thoroughly to apply it on a large scale in the liberation of Europe during World War II. And, from there, to the Madrid Artillery Park, where with the beginning of the Spanish Civil War, in July 1936, they were left in the hands of the Republican Communist government. Already acting as tanks of the assault guards, they intervened in the massacre at the Cardinal de la Montana, on the afternoon of July 19, in Madrid. And two other units, marched against Toledo, to participate in a siege of the Alcazar, a fact in which, they failed, thanks to the heroism of their defenders. In those combats, the second unit was lost, and the remaining three, ended their days, in the following months of the war. Today, there are only two guns left, one, in the Armored Units Museum, El Goloso, Madrid, and the other in the Artillery Academy, Segovia. The Schneider CA-1, was still a tractor, that had been armored and, therefore, too high and unstable for all types of combat. Its trench clearance, was mediocre, as were its chains, in addition to its poor firepower and speed. But not for this reason, it ceased to be, the first self-propelled howitzer, in the history of Spanish artillery, 